Hello, all you wonderful Rise of Kingdoms players out there. This is Dragothian here. Today, what you see before you is a siege unit. It's a siege unit. I feel like that sounds like like G unit or something like that, but no, it's siege unit. That's how we're doing it today. So um, let's talk about siege units and really their importance in the game. I think that for the longest time, and rightfully so, right, they've had a pretty damn bad rap, and you know have been designated as the gathering troop. And for the most part, yeah, it's about right. <laughs> but uh, here's what, what we need to understand. This, is, this video is gonna be about how do you really wanna use siege units in this game? Or more importantly, what are their value? Like what's the value of a siege unit in 2021 you know we're, we're knee deep into it over two years old in this game two and a half years old actually and the game's evolved right we've got commanders that utilize siege units both open field and in garrison and there's lots of things that you can do in this game where a siege unit can be valuable so when we're talking about dropping power to get uh players in after kvk for imperium and we're talking about just killing power in general so that you stay underneath the um the power cap for getting imperium or removing troops so that you uh fall into a different bracket for kvk right this video is going to really kind of hopefully help you decide is it really worth it to do that piece of it for those types of activities when you could get some serious value out of siege units. So first off, let's let's look at it. Obviously, on this main account here, I've killed off quite a few of my siege units for that very reason. I got rid of them because we were dropping Imperium or we were trying to get people in or whatever the, the, the case may be, right? And I feel like I've handicapped myself when I did that. And this and this is why. So there's tons of times, and I've got tons of footage, where YSS Theo was in a flag, and it held against Attila Takeda rallies. It held against Nebuchadnezzar rallies. It held against Guan Herald rallies, Charles Herald rallies, Harold Leo rallies. You name all the top tier, top flight rally pairs in the game today especially from a heroic anthem standpoint and we were able to hold and it wasn't really the best trade obviously right like you know one and a half to one and the negative <laughs> when you're using siege units but again right they're siege units you people killed off millions of siege units in this game for lesser purposes so when we're talking about commanders in the late game right we're talking about commanders like, again, YSS, where you want to have multiple troop types on these commanders. So you've got uh, bonuses to, in the expertise here, when two or more different unit types, you get a 20% increased attack and 20% increased defense. That's substantial. Um, you've also got bonuses on multiple different commanders, including Trajan now, which again, I don't recommend using Siege on Trajan, but you get my idea. They're trying to bring leadership back. They're trying to make leadership great for once. Not great again, but great for once. Um, and then again, Theodore, right? Like she removes all of the different things with her expertise, all the different negative effects that you can have on a garrison there. She removes them. That's always nice. She has all the bonuses that you're going to want in a garrison as well. This combination works really well for using Siege and maybe a few other types of units here and there. And you can hold off rallies that would normally cost you millions of infantry or millions of archers or millions of mixed troops in general with just siege. And if you're doing it right, this is the key, right? If you're doing it right, the trade isn't 10 to one, it's one and a half to one. And that's a little bit more palatable for me when we're talking about trading units in the game, whether it's siege or not, versus regular troops your infantry your archers and your cavalry right so what are we using in the game right why are we going to be using this and is it valuable well i mean to me there's spots in this game where using siege inside of garrisons is very valuable 
in fact, I would say sometimes it's even more valuable because of what what you're being rallied with. If you're being rallied, double rallied, triple rallied, now you don't tend to see that much in Heroic Anthem, although it does happen. Um, but certainly in the first three KVKs, you want to have as many dispensable troops as possible, or expendable, I should say, troops as possible. And throwing away your siege units, if you got 500,000 siege units in the game, and just deleting them to get rid of 5 million power, to me, it's not worth it. It's not worth it to me. I think that you should keep those. Other pairings and kind of some sneaky things that you can do, right? So if you're a, a very active player in the game, but you don't necessarily have all the latest and greatest, right? Um, you can use commanders like Sundiok, right? Where you get siege unit defense and health bonuses. You get additional damage factor when you are leading siege units, all these normal attacks have a chance to give you a thousand damage factor. That's pretty substantial. Also, this is obviously while you're inside of a gathering area. But again, if you don't have your Guan YSG, Guan Alex, right? If you don't have your Charles YSG, your Richard YSG all maxed out, if you don't have Attila Takeda maxed out, Saladin Takeda, you don't have all the biggest and greatest commanders, right? Cyrus and Nebuchadnezzar and the ruins now are going to be insane. For kvks ruins and altars right where you can only bring one march if you're not that guy right if you're not that commander where you've got or that governor where you've got all these maxed out commanders right all these gold shinies and everything you can bring a commander like sundiok and maybe partner her up with a hell even cleo cleo would work i mean you get the bonus damage for siege unit and look at this 50 percent attack and defense when gathering from resource points that stacks because they're both passive right you're getting a little bit of nuke damage from some of the alchemy. I've seen people do this where they park a full T4, T5 siege army inside of a, a different um, a farm node and somebody comes up to attack it with the double C whatever, right? Or Belisarius whatever. And it gets totally wrecked because this has such a great uh, set of buffs. And then you've got equipment that is so good even the basic, some green equipment things have like siege bonuses and things like that, which we can go over a little later, but man, there's, there's tons of things you can do with siege. There's tons of things you can do with siege. And I don't think that it's worth it. If it was up to me and it is up to me in 916, this is what's going to be my recommendation. Cause we were talking about this earlier, as far as what we're going to do for the next wave of migration coming in after KVK three. And we were talking about killing siege off and you know, the initial thought was, yeah, yeah, let's kill Siege off. That's free. That's free power we can get back. But in reality, especially once you get to Heroic Anthem and all these Crystal Tech KVKs, Siege start to become a premium, in my opinion. You don't want to kill your Siege off at all. You want to have those throwaway units, right, where you're not, you're not burning your open field marches. You're not having Siege in your open field marches. Having those as expendable units inside of a flag, pass, fort, whatever, um, will help you save on your troops so that you can keep those troops for the rallies and for open field fighting and hopefully again for Ark of Osiris and Osiris League. So these are the ways that you can kind of be efficient with your troop spending while you're in these really intense heavy fighting KVKs especially after KVK2 going into KVK3, where these 300 day commanders start to unlock in Light versus Darkness. So we're about to go into Light versus Darkness. We've got three days on the timer, probably another two days, and then there's gonna be Marauders. And if we look at the commanders that are locked, right? So here's Attila, right? You have 24, 25 days left basically with pre-KVK being six days now and with the timer left that's 12 days we're basically going to be able to use our best and biggest commanders in two weeks after we go inside of KVK so we're going to have plenty of time to use and gear up all of our newest commanders in KVK3 and so will you so you want to make sure that you've got the right amount of troops to do all the things that you need to do and once Attila Takeda lands on the scene and then all the other latest commanders, the Nebuchadnezzars, the Cyruses, the Artemisias, the Zenobias, the Theodoras, all of those top tier, top flight commanders, right? 
siege becomes critical in my opinion maybe i'm talking out of my rear here but i think for sure that siege now has become with really having all of these top flight commanders inside of the game and really needing to be efficient with your trades i think siege are a must have now you've got to be training siege and you've got to not be killing your siege off or i personally would go ahead and start stockpiling siege for those garrison defenses where you might be a little low on people around a flag but they've got two rallies coming your way well you don't want to get a two or three to one terrible trade losing all your infantry you might as well lose siege instead and keep your infantry for fighting another day that's just my opinion so i hope this has been helpful i you know I, i'm hoping i'm changing some folks minds because i think for the most part people just kind of still and i'm guilty of this sometimes too so don't I'm not grandstanding here, all right? Um, I'm guilty of this too sometimes, but I think Siege nowadays have a place. And I think there's still more things that they could do with Siege. As a development company, they could make Siege really good by giving them a really specific task in the game besides gathering, okay? Um, which is what they already kind of have their task for. But with PvP in mind, right, right now, the meta is you can use Siege in a garrison situation and be fairly effective. I mean, it's not going to be, you know, Zenobia Theodora trades against Attila Takeda where you're getting three to one trades against the top flight rally commanders in, in the game. But you'll get even-ish trades, even-ish, right, which is fine. I like even-ish when you're defending um with siege <laughs> where i'm trading my you know 1.5 million siege for your 1.1 million cav or archers or infantry that's the only reason i have siege is for them to go into a flag and kill your stuff so i'm perfectly fine with that so i hope it's been helpful i hope i've changed some minds uh let me know what you guys think in the comment section below make sure you hit the sub button hit the like button hit the bell notification come on back I'll see you next time cheers have a good one. Take care.